Hi, I am Ryan Zell, and I would like to speak about Galatians 2, 11 to 14. Paul rebukes Peter and what to make of it. But when Caiaphas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he ate with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And with him, the rest of the Jews acted insincerely, so that even Barnabas was carried away by their insincerity. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Caiaphas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? Paul seems to have had a problem with a bunch of people in the scriptures. It wasn't just Peter he argued with. It was just about everybody. In Acts 15, we see Paul having an argument with Barnabas. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take the him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. Besides Paul's argument with Peter, he is seen to have argued with Barnabas, John Mark, and God knows who else. Before I answer why St. Paul and St. Peter argued in Galatia, let's look at a scene you may have missed in Acts 15, 1-41. Here we see Paul and Barnabas going to Jerusalem to have the apostles and elders of the universal church we call Catholic concerning the issue of requiring the Gentile converts to convert and observe the law of Moses so as to allow them to become Christians. After much debate, the apostles and elders, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, came to a decision. St. James tells those present, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden than these essentials. Letters of this ruling are sent out to all the churches, and letters are given to St. Paul and St. Barnabas, who go back to Antioch with other capable men. Now jump to Acts 16.3. Paul wants this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew his father was a Greek. St. Paul was the chief person to go to the apostles in Acts 15 and get a ruling from the apostles concerning the Gentile converts. Yet after this very council, St. Paul does exactly the opposite of what the council decided. He has Timothy circumcised. This is in direct opposition to the ruling of the apostles and elders. Why? Why does he do this? Well, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 9, 19-23. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win more. To the Jews I became a Jew so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not myself being under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I might, by all means save some. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. Why does Paul rebuke Peter in Galatia? It most certainly had to do with table fellowship and who is a member of the community of God. Yet why would Peter sit with the Jews and not with the Gentile converts, or even encourage they both sit together? I believe that St. Peter is also being a Jew to the Jews, who probably were weak in faith and St. Peter recognized this. To the Jews, St. Peter had to become a Jew for their sake, giving no offense in anything so that the ministry will not be discredited. These are words from Paul in 2 Corinthians 6.13. This is why Peter sits with the Jews in Galatia. He believed that he could not give offense to these fellow Jewish converts. And why should he, since there was already friction between Jewish converts and Gentile converts? How could that serve Christ while the church is still in its infancy? If you do not believe this is a valid argument for Paul's rebuke of Peter, I suggest you rip out 1 Peter and 2 Peter from your Bibles. Even when Paul rebukes Peter, 
they didn't turn around and start their own churches. In 1 Corinthians 1, 12 to 13, Paul says this, What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Christ crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? My friends, Christ is divided. He's divided into 40,000 Protestant denominations, cults, and sects. Denomination after denomination. Will it ever stop? No, it won't. But turn to the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church is pre-denominational. Blessings.